Dudes, Jason here. I'm going to make a more sort of simplified ball and tail animation tutorial for you guys. Uh, I'll be walking you through the first method that makes life a lot easier and then I will put together a second tutorial covering the second method um, once I sort of get this groundwork laid. Alright, so first of all, sort of inside of After Effects now, I've brought in my head and tail layer. Right, I've just sort of called that hair from the last tutorial where I was breaking the links, so we'll just rename that to tail. Um, and we're going to make our ball bounce animation now. Okay, so for those of you who did it in class with me, we did that by simply animating the ball. Uh, but then, of course, we had that issue with the tail that you guys remember. All right, so I uh, found a nice simple fix for that, and I'm going to walk you through it now uh, step by step. So get ready for a nice, long, boring tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to set this up for animation the same way that we would our ball bounce animation. All right, so I'm going to grab my pan behind tool and holding control or command, I'm just going to snap it to the bottom of my ball. And then my tail, I'm going to grab using, uh, again, the pan behind tool and I'm just going to lock it to where the tail would connect to the body. All right, then what we can do is um, we can go up to layer new and we're going to create a null object all right so layer new null object and what that does is it will make a sort of empty red outline in your composition uh, it'll be red and its anchor point will be sitting in the top left all right so what a null object basically is um, it's kind of like a uh, imaginary number right it's there but it's not real so what we do is we're going to be using this null object to drive the major animation of our ball moving left to right jumping up and down and then we're going to animate the ball and the tail reacting to uh, that movement uh, as realistically as possible all right so personally i again just want to grab the pan behind tool and i want to make sure that my anchor point is in the center of my null object and then i'm just going to position my null object sort of here in the center. All right, the only way to really drag the null object around is to click and drag on its anchor point. If you click and drag the corners, you'll see that you rescale it. All right, so you'll move it around by moving the uh, anchor point or using your arrow keys and holding down shift to use your arrow keys as well. will help it move around more. Okay, so now that our null object is in place, what we're going to do is we're going to parent our head and our tail to that null object. All right, so I'm just going to drag and select both of these layers and we're going to use the little pick whip tool, this little snail looking icon over here and simply just drag and drop over the word null. Okay, another way of doing it is just selecting this little drop down. If you don't see that drop down, simply click on the toggle switches and mode button over here. You'll see that the parent link actually doesn't disappear and just make sure that instead of saying none, it says null one. Alrighty. Uh, and then we can lock the head and tail because we're not going to be touching them for a while. Okay, so now for those of you who have been introduced to the concept of parenting, we know now that because I move my null object around and my head and tail are parented to it, that null object drives the animation. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll start off with our ball sort of chilling on the ground over here. I'm going to hit Control or Command R for Robot, Romeo, to bring up my rulers. I'll drag that down and just create an imaginary floor and I'll make sure that under view I lock my guides. All right, and then that way I'll make sure that um, I can't accidentally move that ruler. Okay, and this is where I'm going to start. So I'm going to hit P for position and we're going to animate the position of this null object. All right, so there we go. We've now got our first keyframe. Um, now, over the course of a couple of frames, okay, so we don't necessarily want it to start at absolute zero, so let's drag that out to um, like five frames over there, and we can have our first keyframe there. Okay, then over the course of about 20 frames, we can have our ball move backwards for some anticipation. Alrighty, um, so boom, he moves backwards. Okay, and then I'm going to hit con Command or Control C to copy that keyframe, and we'll let it hold again for about 10 frames, so that we can just count those out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'll paste it there. Okay, so now there's not going to be any movement between these two frames. I'm holding that anticipation. 
Then over the course of maybe another 20 frames, I'll have my null object jump into midair. All right, so let's just have that up there. Um, and then another 20 frames, we'll have it land on the floor over here. Okay, so we've got our basic jump. If I play this back, it moves backwards. And then it jumps, and now it's up to us to make this look more realistic. Okay, first thing we can do is just make sure to increase more of an arc to this path over here. So when I select my, my null layer, you'll see I have my path. And these little empty squares represent these keyframes. All right. So if I click on this, you'll see I get my little handles. If you don't see the handles, remember under the pen tool, if you click and hold, there's the convert vertex tool. If you click on these sort of anchor points or you click and drag, you introduce the curves. All right. So I'm just going to introduce some curves here and make sure that our ball isn't just sort of doing a boring uh, angled jump. Okay. Don't worry if it's not exactly like mine. Uh, let's see, pulls back and then jumps in a nice smooth arc. Okay. Um, all right. So now the next thing I can do is I can work on the easing, right? So the easing is going to drive how much anticipation or squash and stretch I have. So I'm just going to click and drag to select all these keyframes, right click, keyframe assist, easy ease. Alrighty. And then we can select one of the keyframes and jump into the graph editor. Remember, if this isn't what you're seeing, if you're seeing this, all right, you simply have to right click in this gray space, edit speed graph, and there we go. All right, so let's take a look at this. We want our characters to sort of like pull back and hold. So what we perhaps do is we have it do that movement quickly and then ease into that, right? So we're just gonna shift our arc up so that we know early on in the animation that's when most of the movement takes place and then it eases into that hold. Alrighty, then we take a look at our jump. We know that we want it to be um, quite fast on the takeoff and then sort of smooth in midair and then land quite fast again. All right, so we remember our peaks. Okay, so we do something like this and then it'll sort of land, but we don't want it to hang in midair. Hopefully you guys remember, we zoom in and we can lift this, these points slightly off of that zero horizon line. All right, so I'll actually lift these quite high. Pull out, and let's take a look at that. Could maybe make this a little bit straighter here, like so. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so that's not too bad. Um, I could probably make these even steeper, just so we've got a nice quick kickoff and then land. All right, that gives us then something to bounce with at the end to react to. Okay, so that's our nice, simple, basic uh, animation done, all right? Um, and that's all we need in terms of our movement. Now, uh, let me introduce you to something as well. So let's take a look at this. When I pull back, all right, I lose a little bit of information out of the side. And if I were to bring up my title and action safe bars, so if I click on this choose grid and guides option, title action safe, um, this just brings up a guide then to see how close I am in terms of the edges of our screen. All right, so when my ball lands, you can see it's quite still deep in the frame, uh, but when it takes off, he is sort of too far to the left. Okay, so all I need to do, layer, new, make another null object. All right, I'll just call this one correction. And all we're going to do is parent null one to correction. Okay, and now when I move the correction, I can adjust my entire animation without affecting any of my keyframes. All right, so now it'll just pull back, jump and land, and sort of be similar within the same space from start to finish. All right, could probably even shift it a little bit more that way. Cool, once I'm done with that, I can get rid of my correction, sorry for the typo, and we can then carry on. All right, so we can lock our null object. We don't want to mess around with that anymore. We can unlock our head, and we are now going to play with our scale. So I'll hit S for scale. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink um, our option here. Just make sure that I'm sitting on 100 and 100. Don't know why that's different. Uh, oh, okay, it's because inside of my Illustrator, my head scale is a little bit weird. Um, but we'll leave it for now. I don't want to spend too much time jumping back and forth. 
All right, so we'll just leave it at 100 and 100, and it can be a slightly potato-headed character. All right, let's see if our tail, yeah, our tail's also gonna be a little bit squashed. So let's see, 100 and 100. Now at least they both look a little strange together. All righty. Um, okay, so we're gonna be playing with the scale of our character. Now, when we start at the very beginning, we're going to have a scale of 100 and 100. All right, our character is sort of at rest. And then as it pulls back, I wanna create the illusion that it is squashing in on itself, right? So we can drag it in, let's make that 80, carry over the 20 like so. Alrighty, squashes like that. Don't worry about the tail, we'll animate that separately just now. So that's getting ready, right? So that's holding, holding. So I wanna copy and paste that keyframe just to make sure that it doesn't change. And then, as it jumps forward, so right, we can have the entire thing of it's now sort of drawing itself back, uh, and then we need it to, to jump um, upwards in that direction. So we'll have this then be a perfect circle again. 100 and 100. And then when it lands, we want to have it squashed down. Right, so we'll bring that down. Let's make this one 80 now. And this can be 120 to stretch out. And then one, two, three, four, five maybe. Let's animate our null again so that our ball does a little bit of a jump up. Okay. Notice then that as I'm moving it up, it creates this weird little arm. Okay, and it's gonna animate strangely along that. So I'm just gonna quickly grab my convert vertex tool click on this new point that was just made and then at the bottom point and then that way it's only just going to move in a straight wood up fashion all right and then five frames later it can move back down zoom in here back down to the ground for you all right and then as it gets to the top of this bounce we'll have a perfect circle again and then when it hits the ground one last time, we'll have a tiny amount of um, squash. So let's make that like 90, we'll make that 110. And then a couple of frames later, we can have it come to rest at a full 100, 100. Okay, so let's play this back quickly and see if we're missing anything. So we've got a squash, jump, okay. And then obviously we need to adjust our timing. Okay, but scrubbing through, we've got our stretch. Okay, then what we could probably do as well, just to grant the illusion of it actually jumping upwards, is right before it leaves the ground, we want to add a little bit of squash. We want to flatten it. All right, so let's take this frame and move it back by about three frames. And then as it leaves the ground, we'll swap these values around, all right? So I'm just gonna sort of round up. So we'll make this um, 120 and we'll make this 80. Okay, so it gets ready, boom, and then it jumps. And then we get up to a perfect circle. All right. Okay, hopefully we all follow along the line of thinking, right? It didn't make sense for it to be able to jump straight from this sort of stretched straight, uh, state. We want it to be able to have a little bit of a pop. All right, and then we can always adjust that as necessary. So let's select all these keyframes. Let's add some easing to them. So keyframe assist, easy ease. And then we can jump into this. Now, we haven't really played around with easing in the graph editor, um, but it's really not as scary as it looks. Okay, it basically just has two different values because there is a height and a width. Right? So we know for a fact that when our ball was moving backwards like so, we gave it a sort of uh, curve like this. Right, So you'll see that there are two markers. There's one for the red, one for the green. Okay, So just always remember to do both, otherwise it's going to look very strange. Um, and if I take a look at that, cool, so that's looking good. It matches the movement. All right. Now, for this, we want this to happen really fast, but we want it to happen at the end of its given frames, right? So that it jumps super quickly. Boom. Okay. Then we can go back into our layer 
and we want to add some stretch so one two three frames out I'll copy paste this chosen keyframe all right so I know that's the wrong one we'll copy paste the keyframe that we have our stretch uh, our squash taking place on one two three uh, copy paste that one and then we'll swap our values around 80 okay. the reason why we're doing that is now we have the option of or rather we've created the illusion of it squashing jumping and conforming into this uh, sort of stretch stretch state that's really difficult to say uh, before coming to rest at a perfect circle all right or as perfect as this weird potato fox can look like all right so we'll jump back into this graph editor we'll not open uh, itunes just want to zoom in here let's take a look so it jumps very quickly uh, let's see what it looks like if I then have it stretch very quickly as well all right so squash stretch nice illusion there all right so we can pull that back um, let's actually just move down our timeline a little bit and take a look here so as it starts easing into the perfect circle again we want that to be happening um, sort of fairly soon all right um, so that it sort of really eases into that scale of a perfect circle and then obviously as we move down we want the opposite all right so we'll sort of just drag these out being careful not to move these points up or down off the off the horizon line there um, let's make it like so and then we'll see here. All right, so we need to add another stretch layer, a uh, uh, keyframe, sorry, one, two, three. And we can actually just copy this stretch layer over here, right? Because the values are gonna be the same. We can copy that, Control or Command C, and we can go a couple of frames beforehand and paste it there. All right, let's jump back into the graph editor and let's take a look. Okay, so we are just going to round this out a little bit more so that it's easing into that position like so boom and then we want this to hit the ground quite hard so there we go we would all want that transition to take place too soon okay we only want it to really squash when it hits the ground so we can then make a very sharp peak in this area so that most of that motion is only taking place as it hits the ground. See that, boom, hits the ground. Okay, then it comes to a perfect circle uh, whilst it's sort of bopping in midair, then it squashes down again and then it goes back into a perfect circle. All right, so let's have that sort of bop take place quite quickly. Like so, all right, so boom. And then we only want it to squash when it actually hits the ground again. So we'll make sure that most of our movement happens at the end of that action. Okay, so if I scrub through here, there we go. And then this one here, we can kind of just play around with, make maybe like a little bit of a peak in the center. And if we play this back. Cool, so we've got a nice little bop. Uh, that ending could probably use a little bit of work. Uh, we definitely need it to stretch upwards before it becomes a perfect circle again. All right, so maybe two frames after it's hit the ground, I can just find a keyframe where it's been stretched. All right, so I'll take this one here, copy that, and I'll just paste it here. Okay, and then jump back into the graph editor and make sure it's looking right. Okay, so that happens way too quickly there. Boom, okay, it stretches far too quickly. Uh, so we can then just make sure that this only really happens a little bit later. Like so, right, and you guys will see that it's really just a, it's really just trial and error at this point. Um, right, we're just gonna do whatever we can to make it look good. So, if it doesn't follow the rules of thumb that we've seen before in class, uh, then it doesn't really matter, right? We just have to go through and make it look the way we want it to. 
Right, so the other thing as well is that these are obviously too intense here at the end. So let's rather make this um, like 105 and 95 here. And then when it stretches, we can turn that into again 95, 105. And then when it lands, again, that's a little too intense. So we'll just make that like um, maybe 105 and 95 again, right? We can just sort of stick to that motif. So if we play this back, take a look. Okay, and yeah, all right, it's not looking too bad. Uh, could definitely spend some time refining it a little bit further, but for now, I think it sort of does what we need it to. Okay, now we need to animate our tail. Okay, so we can lock our head and uh, we can lock our null and we're gonna take a look at the tail. Okay, so to animate our tail, we're going to need to do a couple of things. The very first thing we need to do is grab our pen uh, puppet uh, position tool. All right, it's this little um, button up here. All right, so when I select that, you'll see that my cursor now looks like a little thumbtack. And I'm just going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Grab that tool again. And this is what we use to deform our shape layers. All right, so if I make a little point over here, you'll see it generates a little yellow dot. I'll make one in the center and I'll make one at the tip. Okay, and now using that tool, I can deform this tail as I see fit. Okay, um, you'll notice that it's difficult to maintain the volume, all right? So that's something that we're gonna have to try and keep in mind. But for now, it's doing what it needs to do. All right, so if we took it to our layer, um, you'll see that it's, it's sort of expanded this quite far, right? And you don't have to go digging through to try and find the keyframes for this. So we're just gonna hit U for uniform. All right, and you'll see that it then brings up some keyframes, puppet one, puppet pin two, puppet pin three. All right, and that refers to one, two, and three. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are now going to just walk through slowly and we're gonna start having this tail react correctly. So as this ball sort of uh, moves backwards, what we can do is we can then just make sure that our tail stays connected. All right, um, we're going to bend that tail and we're gonna bring it up a little bit, right? So we're gonna start adding some rotation with our null layer a little bit later. But for now, we wanna create the illusion that our tail is getting ready to spring. All right, and you'll notice that it's acting really weird. This point over here is sucking through the tail tip. All right, so for whatever horrible reason, our path is down here. All right, this isn't something that we'll be dealing with in the next example, but I'd like to just walk you through this process for now. Okay, so you'll see that the reason why this tail tip is sucking through the tail when we move is because it's following this straight path over here. All right, so what we need to do is just make sure to select that key and we need to add a curve for that tail tip to follow so that when we pull it back, you see it's actually not sucking through itself. It's moving in a nice clean arc. All right, and then if I select my other key, um, I can zoom in here nice and close and then just make sure that I have a bit of an arc going on here as well. All righty, zoom all the way out so I can see what I'm doing again. Um, and then if we take a look at that, that's looking fairly good. All right, so we'll obviously have to add our easing, but for now, we're just gonna be blocking it out. Okay, so again, we're going to be holding at this point. So I'm just going to copy paste those keyframes, right? And you'll see when I do copy paste them, we get this weird little movement going on. Okay, so in order to fix that, uh, if you don't get that movement, that's fine. Some of you will, some of you won't. But in order to make sure that doesn't happen, I'm just going to select uh, these keyframes over here. All right, when they first get into that position, I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to say toggle hold keyframe. What that means is these keys will not move until another keyframe tells them to. All right, I think it makes sense. So let's take a look at what happens here. All right, so our body sucks down, right? It gets really ready to jump. So we can then have our tail uh, move a little bit more as well. And we can move the tip of that tail too. All righty. Um, and then boom. Our ball jumps into midair, and we can then animate our tail accordingly. Okay, so when it gets into midair, uh, chances are good that our tail will sort of be trailing behind it, all right? But still, it's still got that momentum, so it's still going to be angled upwards a little bit. Okay, 
And if we move ourselves back here, we actually want to add a snap in between here. We want that tail to have a nice flick before it comes to rest. All right, so about halfway through, I'm just going to invert it like so. So that if I take a look at these keys, boom, that'll be a nice flick as soon as I add the correct path, right? So the correct curve. So the easiest way to do this is using your Convert Vertex tool, which is hidden under the pen tool, because that allows me to adjust individual paths separate of one another. Okay, so let's take a look at where um, this tail goes wrong, right? So we'll find the point where it's sucking through itself and we'll see visually, okay, cool. This path is going to be able to help me fix that, okay? So there it goes. Let's zoom in here and grab this arm as well. Just add a curve there. So typically, once you start adding a curve, you'll be able to see when or where or how that curve should then just be continued throughout. All right, so we'll just do that. And we've got a nice snap going on there. All right, that could probably be a little bit more uh, aggressive even so we'll just move that over there let's bring this one down slightly like so and then when we're look using this um, anchor point remember that we also need to include curves to make sure that it behaves correctly all right okay so nice and time consuming but you'll see that by the time we get to it our um, animation is going to look pretty sick. All right, so we've got that going. Drag that out. So now we've got it moving correctly. And let's see. Okay, so we've got a horrible suck through there. All right, let's see what's causing that. That's this one over there. So we want to drag that all the way out. And then we'll adjust its opposite one there. Okay, so. All right, so you can see that this is just, again, uh, a progress of trial and error. Okay. Okay, so that's looking quite horrible. Um, <laughs> oh, it's just so much fun. I love it. Um, okay, so let's do this again. Try and even it out a little bit. And hopefully when we then play it back, it's not going to look too bad. Okay, it's not looking terrible. Once we start adding easing, it's going to look a lot better. All right. Um, and then our tail is really, as, it's, um, as our ball starts moving downwards, our tail is going to start floating up. All right, it's going to sort of have this uh, kind of look to it, and we can play with the rotation of it later. All right. But for now, we'll just have it look like that. And then as our body uh, sort of um, stretches, let us make sure, we can actually move these keyframes up to here. Let's make sure that our tip is staying in the right place. Okay. Uh, then it hits the ground, right? So as it hits the ground, we're gonna have a bit of a delay. So maybe as it starts getting into midair, actually, this is when we're gonna have that tail kind of whip, catch up to the fact that uh, that momentum has not been lost. Okay, so we'll have to just fix that path again. Let's grab it there, zoom out so I can find it. All right, so it's going to be these straight lines over here. All right, so these straight lines here. So let's add a bit of path to that. Okay. And then as our ball comes down, it's going to do the opposite, right? Our tail is sort of going to like flap up into midair. And we'll see we've got another sucking situation there. So we'll just drag that out. And then as it comes to rest, it's going to sort of um, flop about just a little bit. So let me just zoom in so I can select these properly. We'll have that straighten out that sort of bump up and then a couple of frames later just come to rest okay so let's play that back and see again trial and error um, right so it's looking okay could definitely afford to add some rotation 
Uh, but let's add some, <coughs> excuse me, let's add some easing first. Now, the keys that we added toggle hold keyframe to, we don't want to touch, right? We don't want to accidentally take that um, holding away. So I'm just going to select all of these, right click, keyframe assist, easy ease, and then I'll select these three and apply easing as well. And then uh, we're mainly animating the puppet pin three, which is the tip of our tail. So we'll just select that one over there and we'll dive into the graph editor. Okay, so this is gonna look a little bit strange, this is where our tail is holding, right? That's our hold keyframe. So we can actually just drag that back down to the bottom there. And we remember, of course, that our character is moving quite fast to begin with, and then easing into that final position. All right, so if I play this back, right, so that's looking a little bit better already because we're uh, timing it to the body correctly. Okay, then, the very next thing we do is our character squashes down and then jumps up really quickly, right? So let's have it squash down. Okay. And then as it jumps, it um, sort of stretches out to that point there. So let's do this. Okay, and we can move a little bit more of that path there. Okay, so we are sucking through at that point, so we just need to make sure that we're gonna add a little bit. We might need to actually add another keyframe just to help with that, but let's see. All right, uh, so our ball gets to mid air and our tail then needs to sort of ease into that, All right? So we're going to have it, most of the action sort of take place at that point there, so we'll drag this out and it eases into that position um, and we could probably even afford to, if we just jump back here, just shift these keyframes down the timeline a little bit. All right, uh, just so that the tail sort of overlaps um, and really only starts falling as we get to this point here. All right, so again, we want that point where it starts to fall to, to sort of happen a little bit later. And then we only want our tail to really react when we hit the ground right so we're going to then have a peak over here and I can bring our peak in that direction let's see if that's working okay this can actually be a lot slower so maybe we'll just drag that back make a little bit of a central peak and then let's play through and see what we've got right so we still need to add it to our second pin our puppet pin 2 Okay, it looks like our jumping at the very end, the bounce on the tail is a bit much. So we can then just quickly, let's see here, boom, hit the ground. Okay, let's have it not react as harshly. Okay, so we'll just flatten that out a little bit. Again, flatten it out just a little bit like so. And then ever so slightly. All right, um, and then we come to rest. Okay, so pretty much like that. And then we need to jump into our puppet pin number two. All right, so that's the central one over there. And we basically just need to do the same thing. Now the easiest way to do this would be to select both of these keys, bring them into um, the graph editor together, and then just make sure that I'm working with the correct key um, and adjusting it to match, right? So you see I've got a pink line and then a slightly more magenta line. Magenta line's referring to probably pin two. And then as I scrub down, you'll see that I'm able to actually see and compare the two. So I can use one as reference for the other. All right, so we can do something like that. And I'm simply just clicking, just clicking on these little yellow dots, making sure that I get a little bit of reaction going on Okay, let's click over here and see, get a little curve going there. And it's just a matter of getting it to look the same. So those two don't change at all at the end. Okay. All right, so now we've got like a little bit of a, a little bit of a tail waggle going on. Okay, there is still a horrible section over here where the tail sucks in on itself over here. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is just with my selection tool, I'm just going to add a key. Oh, make sure I don't have both keys selected. Uh, pop a pin three. I'm just going to select it and make sure I add a key where I just drag it out a little bit. All right, just ever so slightly. And then using my convert vertex tool, I will just introduce a little bit of a curve to that. And then just fix this one so that we don't have any issues with that later down the line okay so that is looking a little bit better okay so let's play that back now and see okay so that holds a little bit long what I can do then is uh, I can just make sure, okay, so we've, we're holding over between this gap over here. So then I'm just going to make sure that I have all my keyframes selected. So I'll just undo those locks there. Click and drag all these keyframes and let's make the hold only three frames. One, two, three, yeah, three frames should work. Shift those down, so I'm simply dragging them down the timeline. Okay, and the pullback is also maybe too long, right? So that's a whole 20 frames. So let's make that only 15 frames. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Select all of our keyframes. Shift them down the timeline. Okay. Um, again, maybe 15 is too long. Make it 10. Um, and this is just, you know, you, you sort of learn to be able to guess how many frames you need to do at any given time um, it sort of just comes with practice okay so now we can add a couple of more things to help with this right what we can do is we can add some rotation all right so if we add some rotation to our null object shift R to bring up rotation you'll see that I animate the rotation sort of entirely okay I could also just animate the rotation of my head and body um, separate to one another okay but for now let's do the rotation on the null object I'll add a keyframe as it's leaning in um, it's not really gonna rotate much right and it's only gonna really change over here so let's time it with this squash down all right so we'll have our keyframe in line with where our ball starts squashing down let's add just the slightest of rotation Okay, so like minus 10 degrees, right? Notice that I'm only animating this value, not this one, okay? As it jumps, okay, uh, we can then have it even out, right? So by the time it gets here, we wanna have it um, sort of uh, horizontal again, so we'll just make that zero. Okay, so we've got a long gap between that. We're gonna add some good easing to that. And then as it starts coming down, probably to about this point, again, in line with this scale key, we can then just add 10, positive 10 degrees, right? That'll make it sort of aim down. I could add a little bit more. All right, so maybe just uh, 25, whatever looks right for your particular animation. Alrighty. Um, and then just before it hits the ground, we'll have it straighten out to zero degrees again. And then at this point, it's not really gonna rotate for that little pop, okay. Again, add some easing to this rotation. Keyframe assist, easy ease, and let's jump into the graph editor for the rotation. Okay, so that's what it looks like here. Um, okay, so we've got that going on there. Let's have it um, happen quite quickly. All right, so I'll start off slow and rotate quickly towards the end there. Boom, jumps into the air. We only really want that sort of flattening, right? The correction of the rotation uh, to happen again, um, kind of towards the end of the motion. So we'll just have it stay at an angle for quite a while. Okay. And then we want it to start leaning forward quite quickly. So we'll bring our arc in this direction, like so. Okay, so now it's leaning down. Maybe that happens a little bit too soon, so we can just, again, measure that out. There we go. And then, just as he's about to hit the ground, we want him to straighten out, boom. Okay. All right, so we'll play that back. 
All right, and notice how a simple addition of um, rotation really helps bring that out. Maybe I can just have that pop a little bit sooner, like so. Okay. So that is one of the key methods, or one of the, the main ways of doing the ball and tail animation. Um, what then I'm going to do is I'll end this tutorial now, and then I'll show you in the next one how to render with media encoder. Um, but then I will hit you guys with another tutorial um, on how to do the tail animation without actually using the puppet pins. All right, so look forward to that one. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys around. Ciao.